A greedy daughter deceives her mother into giving her inheritance and then throws her out of her own house, making her become a homeless person. But when the girl finds out she's lost everything, she regrets it bitterly. The day before Valentina's nefarious plan, the sky was cloudy and gray, as if nature was reflecting the darkness of that ungrateful daughter's soul. The rain fell thinly and steadily, creating a melancholy atmosphere that hung over the mansion. The girl, however, was excited and could hardly contain her enthusiasm. She walked around the house, smiling mischievously, as she thought about what her life would be like when she had the mansion all to herself. In her bedroom, she looked in the mirror and said, Tomorrow is the big day. Soon this house will be all mine, and my mother won't be able to do anything. And laughed at her own words, convinced that her plan would work. That evening at dinner, Ella, her mother, commented on the weather. What a sad and ugly day, right? Asked the old lady without imagining what was going on in the young girl's thoughts. Yes, mom. The weather really isn't helping, Valentina replied, trying to disguise her excitement. After dinner, the lady went to her room, feeling tired from another busy day. The girl took advantage of the moment of solitude to go over the details of her scheme. She had forged the necessary documents and rehearsed several times how she would convince her mother to sign them. Tomorrow, I'll say it's a document to guarantee the upkeep of the house. She'll never suspect a thing, she thought, satisfied with her plan. And so, while Ella slept innocently, her daughter was up all night, planning every step of her coup. I can't stand this miserable life anymore, she muttered to herself. However, her life was far from miserable. Valentina, a 23-year-old girl, was a spoiled brat who always had everything she wanted. Her father and mother raised her with every luxury and comfort they could offer their daughter. The girl grew up amidst the wealth of her family, who owned a small milk factory and other dairy products, as well as several farms. But the insensitive girl's greed seemed to know no bounds, and she always craved more and more. When her father died, Ella took over the business maintaining the simplicity and humility that had always characterized their personality. But the lady was a kind and naive woman in Valentina's eyes, who believed that her mother didn't have enough ambition to make the most of their fortune. She wanted to live in even more luxury than her family could afford and was impatient to take control of the business and the estate left by her father. Realizing that her mother wasn't going to give her that power anytime soon, the ungrateful girl decided to take action on her own. She tried to forge documents to transfer the house, the bank accounts, the company and other assets into her name, and was sure that her mother would never suspect her. The forged documents included property transfer contracts and proxies that would guarantee Valentina total control of the family's businesses and farms. With her papers in hand, and her plan carefully thought out, the young woman was ready to strike the blow that would change her life forever. The next morning arrived, and the girl prepared to put her scheme into action. She went downstairs and found her mother in the kitchen, wearing that red coat she loved so much and eating a warm, simple breakfast as she always did. The daughter took a deep breath and approached, trying to look casual as always and unconcerned. Morning, Mom, she exclaimed with a forced smile on her face. Good morning, honey, the woman replied, returning her smile. Valentina sat down at the table and started talking about the family business, showing a sudden interest in the running of the factory and the finances. The young woman mentioned how important it was to ensure the maintenance of the house and all the assets for the future. Mom, I've been thinking, maybe we should take some measures to make sure everything is in order, in case something happens to us. After Dad left so suddenly, I'm worried about our future, especially if something happens to you too, she suggested, starting her coup and making a distressed face. The mother, surprised by the girl's concern, asked, Why are you worried about that, honey? Nothing is going to happen to me. But if you're afraid that might happen, what do you think we should do? The girl took the opportunity and presented the forged documents to her mother, explaining that they were contracts and proxies that would guarantee the security and maintenance of the family's assets. You see, mom, these documents ensure that if anything happens to us, our assets and business will be protected and well managed. I checked everything with a lawyer and he said it would be better for both of us to be safe. She lied shamelessly, trying to win L.A.'s trust. The woman, naive and trusting, examined the papers carefully, but didn't understand the content very well. Valentina noticed her confusion and decided to use it to her advantage. Mom, I know it may sound complicated, 
but it's simple. These documents transfer ownership of the house and family business to my name. That way, should anything happen to you, I'll be able to take care of everything and ensure that our family continues with no problems. I'm already 23. I want to get married and have children in a few years. And I'm afraid that if something happens to you, just like it happened to dad, my future children won't be entitled to our legacy. I want to make sure that I can support them just as you and dad supported me. The evil girl explained, hiding the truth behind her words. Her mother hesitated for a moment, but the concern and love she felt for her daughter prevented her from suspecting anything. She agreed with her suggestion and picked up a pen to sign the papers. You're right, love. We need to think about our future and ensure that our family remains united and prosperous, said the woman, signing everything with a confident smile, believing she was doing the best for her daughter. As for the scammer, she could hardly believe that her plan was working. She watched every movement of the pen intently, her heart racing with excitement and tension. When her mother finished, Valentina tried to contain the euphoria that was growing inside her. However, she knew she needed to maintain the appearance of gratitude and genuine concern. Thank you so much, Mom. You don't know how much this means to me. I promise I'll take care of everything with a lot of love and dedication, she said, trying to sound sincere. The lady smiled and hugged her daughter, touched by her supposed gesture of responsibility and concern. I know, my daughter. I trust you and I know you'll do the best for our family. I just want you to be happy and successful." The girl returned the hug, trying to hide with the excitement that consumed her. She had just pulled off the biggest scam on her own mother, and her greed and ambition spoke louder. With the document signed, the young woman left the kitchen and went upstairs to her bedroom, where she kept the papers in a locked drawer. She could hardly believe that she now owned everything she had ever wanted. The mansion, the businesses, the farms, and the family fortune. So it hadn't even been a week since Valentina finally got the family's possession of all the possessions, and the girl had already changed her behavior drastically. She talked openly about how she would spend all her money and how she would enjoy her life to the full. Her drastic change frightened Elle, who never imagined that her daughter would act this way. The truth was that the girl was only revealing her true nature that of a greedy person who was completely incapable of being grateful for her parents' love and affection. Mom, as soon as the accountant calculates our entire fortune, I'm going on a trip around the world. I'm going to see all the places I've always dreamed of," she exclaimed enthusiastically. Ignoring her mother's feelings, the lady was shocked and sat in Ed, seeing how quickly her daughter had changed. Val, do you really think that this is the most important thing right now? Wouldn't it be better to invest in our business and think about our future? What about your family that you want to build? The girl laughed and replied dismissively. Mom, you really don't understand, do you? Do you think I have time to raise a child? Life is too short. I want to enjoy it while I'm young and hot. After all, the money is all mine now, isn't it? You can't do anything about it. The old lady, with tears in her eyes, still tried to argue. Valentina, I signed those documents thinking about our future together and that of your children and not for you to waste everything on luxury and ridiculous pleasures. Shut up, mom, shouted the girl. Save the lecture. You may have come from a poor family and blah blah blah, but I didn't. I want to enjoy everything my father left me. The argument between the two intensified, and the words became increasingly harsh and cutting. Your father and I worked so hard for everything we achieved. You're crazy if you think I'm going to let you ruin everything, said the lady in an indignant and angry tone. And then, in a fit of rage, the spoiled girl screamed, You cannot do anything, you stupid old woman. You can't even understand the documents you signed and you think you can stop me. You know what? If you're going to get in my way, then get out of my house now. I don't need you for anything, you disgusting old wench. Ella begged her daughter, heartbroken. Valentina, please don't do this. Have you gone mad? We're a family, for God's sake. But the brat, blinded by greed and selfishness, grabbed her mother's arm and pushed her towards the door. With a cold, merciless stare, she threw her own mother out of the house, slamming the door in her face. The woman knocked on the door several times, calling for the girl, but she ignored her completely, while she opened a bottle of expensive wine. Valentina! Valentina! Open the door! The mother continued to cry out. Then, as dry as her wine, the girl shouted, Get out of here, you scum! 
You're dead weight. If you don't get out of here now, I'll call the police for trespassing. Elle found herself on the street that night, with nowhere to go and tears streaming down her face. Her daughter, to whom she had devoted her entire life, had betrayed her in a merciless and cruel way, leaving her with absolutely nothing. Helpless and with no alternatives, she was forced to live on the street, suffering the consequences of the ungrateful girl's actions. Valentina, on the other hand, was overjoyed, as she now had the entire mansion to herself. With a satisfied smile on her face, she was already planning how she would enjoy her new life. She would throw incredible parties, go on luxurious trips, buy the best clothes and shoes, and date lots of rich, hot guys. However, just three days later, her accountant called and gave her the worst news of all. Valentina, I have very bad news for you. Your mother has donated the entire family fortune to charity, the farms, the accounts, the company, everything. When she signed the papers, she had nothing left. In fact, the house you're living in now has been sold to a company that wants to demolish it and build an industrial complex. You have two weeks to vacate. The young woman was shocked and in disbelief, feeling her world crumble under her feet. What do you mean? Are you saying that I'm broke? Exactly, said the man. Who does she think she is? How can she donate everything? And why did she sign the documents if we had nothing? She made a fool of me. That witch, she's going to pay for this, shouted the young woman, huffing angrily into the phone and hung up on the accountant. Desperate and furious, the girl decided to look for her mother in the streets, determined to confront her about what had happened and even threaten her, if necessary, for the deception. She looked everywhere for Ella, calling her contacts and asking them to help her find her, but no one seemed to know where her mother was. Then one day, while watching the news on television, she discovered that a viaduct had collapsed and killed 50 homeless people who were sheltering underneath it. To her horror, she saw the victims' belongings on TV, and among them was her mother's favorite red coat, the one she was wearing the day she was thrown out of the house. A wave of shock went through the girl's body, and in an instant, all her hatred, complaints, and plans to find her mother turned into a nightmare and the pain of terrible regret. Crying, she regretted her actions bitterly. Oh my God, what have I done? She died because of me. I should never have been so cruel and selfish. The girl felt the weight of her remorse and regret, but now, believing that her mother was dead, it was too late to make amends for her mistakes. Her life had changed dramatically, and now she had to face the consequences of her thoughtless actions and greed. At that moment, all she wished for was to be able to go back in time and do things differently. But life, unfortunately, doesn't offer second chances so easily. The company that had bought the mansion soon showed up to evict Valentina. She begged for mercy, but to no avail. With nowhere to go and abandoned by all her friends who rejected her when she needed them most, the spoiled girl was forced to live on the streets, just like her poor mother. The girl went hungry, cold and experienced suffering that she never imagined she could bear. She didn't know how to get food or how to survive that difficult life. Her physical and emotional decline was accentuated day by day, and she felt the weight of guilt on her back constantly. Then, one cold, rainy afternoon, months later, she managed to get $20 from a kind person. Even though she was starving, she decided that the money would be used for something more important, to go to one of the old farms that had belonged to her parents and beg the new owners for a job, even if it meant washing toilets, picking up animal feces, whatever they could offer. She knew that one of the prides of her family's legacy was to hire people who really needed help. With hope in mind, the girl dragged herself to the farm, dressed in shabby clothes. She looked like someone who had lost everything and desperately needed a fresh start. But the ungrateful girl could hardly imagine what she would find there. When she got there, her hair disheveled from days of living on the streets, she approached the farm workers, crying and begging for a job. Her heart was tight, and her voice trembled as she begged. Please, I beg you, I need a job. Anything you have, I'll do anything, she said, sobbing and with tears streaming down her face. The employees, surprised by the young woman's plea, exchanged glances and decided to call their boss to interview her. Valentina waited, anxious and afraid, not knowing what to expect from the meeting. As she waited, 
Her hands trembled and her desperation grew. However, when the door opened and the boss appeared, the girl felt as if the ground had disappeared from under her feet. There was her mother, Elle, looking elegant and healthy in a sophisticated dress and a pearl necklace. The look on her face was a mixture of surprise, sadness, and a hint of disappointment. The daughter was shocked, incredulous, and cried even more, sobbing loudly as she stared at her mother. The emotion was so intense that her vision became blurred with tears. She couldn't understand how it was possible that her mother, who she thought was dead, was there, so alive and apparently successful. The young woman tried to speak, but her voice wouldn't come out. Her chest was tight and she could only sob. The lady, for her part, looked at her daughter with regret, aware of the suffering the girl had gone through since the company evicted her from the mansion. Even so, the expression on her face indicated that she was determined to make the girl learn an important life lesson. When Valentina, overcome with emotion, tried to run to hug her mother, the woman held up her hand to stop her. The young woman was confused and didn't understand the gesture, and it was then that her mother revealed it. Valentina, I always knew about your plan. My contacts told me everything. The lawyers, including the accountant you hired, they all work for me. The girl's eyes widened in surprise and fright. It turned out that Ella had pretended to donate her entire fortune to charity, foreseeing her insensitive daughter's intentions. The lady wanted to test whether she really had the courage to strike a scam and betray her own mother. However, she never imagined that the girl would be able to throw her out of the house, and she spent all this time in a country house that belonged to the family. Contrary to what Valentina thought, her mother was extremely intelligent and the real mastermind behind the success of the dairy and the farms. Elle and her husband, who helped her a lot, built that whole empire together with a lot of love and dedication. But because she was humble and didn't dress up much, the spoiled girl grew up believing that she could fool her mother, without imagining her real intelligence. Still confused, the girl asked about the mansion, and the lady replied, I never imagined that you would be so cruel, and that you would have the courage to do those things to me. Even worse, you were capable of kicking me out and sending me to live on the street. So I did the same to you. The girl fell to her knees and wept bitterly, begging for the woman's forgiveness. However, Ella, even with a heavy heart, said she couldn't forgive her. The malice, ingratitude, and brutality her daughter had shown her were unforgivable to her. The pain caused by the betrayal of someone who came from her own womb was something the lady would never forget. However, still full of resentment, kind and compassionate as she was, the businesswoman allowed the girl to work on the farm. But she made it clear that she would no longer be entitled to any part of the inheritance. The lady actually decided to donate all of her fortune to charity, and the ungrateful daughter would have to support herself only with the salary she earned from her job as a helper since she had no qualifications for other positions. The lady was firm and said that if the girl wanted to change her life and grow up, she would have to start from the bottom, just as she and her late husband had done. Valentina then had to face the consequences of her actions and learn to live with the weight of her past. The relationship between the two was never the same. The old woman treated her only as an employee and no longer as her daughter. Little by little, the young woman came to understand the value of work and effort to achieve her goals in life. She realized that her greed and ingratitude had cost her the love and respect of her mother and that nothing could repair the damage done. It was a constant reminder of the importance of humility, love and respect in family relationships and how ambition can destroy what is most precious, the family. And if you liked this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.